Hey folks, Sean here from visibledark.ca. Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to look at how to integrate RGB stars with narrowband. Um, so what we have here is uh, an RGB image of the elephant's trunk, IC1396. And uh, we've got the color in the stars, uh, natural color in the stars. And over here, we've got the uh, narrow band image that I took. And this is equivalent data, four and a half hours each. Um, but the stars don't look as natural in the narrow band um, as they do in the RGB. So we want to incorporate the um, RGB stars and the narrow band uh, image of the nebula together. So here's a really simple way to do it. Um, I've been doing it this way for quite some time now and thought uh, maybe it was something that um, others might uh, find useful. So I thought I would uh, demonstrate the technique for you and it's really simple to do. Let's get started on it. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do is have our stretched RGB image and our stretched narrowband image open. And you're gonna to wanna to create a star mask. Now, when you open the star mask, and you, get, you can access the star mask by going to process uh, mask generation star mask. When you open it, it'll be set at these defaults here. And most of the defaults will remain the same. We're only gonna change two or three things. Uh, we're gonna bring the noise threshold up a bit. Um, you can bring this up to two or three, uh, two and a half, whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, you might have to experiment to see what kind of results you get with the star mask, but um, the uh, scale we're going to bring up to 12 because we want to incorporate the larger stars that we're seeing. We're seeing the larger stars in the images. We want to the star mask that we create to be able to um, incorporate those as well. So if we increase the scale, we'll be able to capture those in our star mask. We're gonna leave everything else the same. The only thing we're gonna change down here is truncation and we're gonna drop it to 0.5. So now you're going to create that mask and you can create the mask simply by, uh, you wanna make sure that your RGB image is selected and then you can click apply and you'll be able to have PixInsight create the star mask for you. So let's do that. It's gonna take a little bit for the star mask to be created. Um, sit tight, grab a coffee or uh, um, just uh, have a little bit of patience. PixInsight, depending on the uh, speed of your computer, it, PixInsight will do it faster or slower. Um, I'm going to fast forward through this uh, mass generation part just so we get to the uh, end result. Okay, and PixInsight has created the mask for us. Now, the mask looks good. We've got a lot of the stars in here that we want to protect. Uh, we want to protect the stars when we add in the narrow band data to the RGB image. But before we can use this mask, we want, we'll notice that the um, edges are very hard around the uh, stars. We want to soften that. We want a more uh, gradual uh, protection. Um, so what we're going to do is go to process, uh, convolution, and we're going to blur these slightly. Um, what I'll do is just take a preview window of a star region and just work on that to start with. So we've got this one here. If we uh, drop this on, we can actually, we could see how it blurred it quite significantly. And you're gonna wanna do that. Um, you're gonna want, your defaults are going to be um, like this before you apply the uh, settings, but you're going to want to um, you're going to want to uh, uh, blur the image a little bit and uh, get some of those hard edges off of the stars. So we'll just apply this convolution. And that looks a lot better. That's maybe a little too much. Why don't we back that off a little bit? We'll take it down to 22. That's better. Okay, so we've got 
now we've got the um, hard edges taken off the stars as you can see here a little more subtle masking taking place for the stars now what we want to do is we'll close the convolution uh, tool and we can minimize the star mask creation tool uh, we're going to want to apply this mask to the RGB image so to do that we click on the tab and drag it over and drop and we know it's active because it shows up here you can see it's sort of a, a brownish color um, this indicates that it's active we can actually show and hide the mask so the mask is on red is protecting the areas that we see um, what we want to do is invert it though because we want to protect the stars we want the stars protected for when we add in all this nebulosity from the narrow band image when we combine it to make our narrow band image with RGB stars so we're going to leave the mask inverted and we're going to just disable the preview of it we're going to hide it for now the mask is still enabled we can see that it's still there and what we're going to do is use some pixel math and we're going to apply this narrow band image, the nebulosity, to the RGB image while we retain the stars, the RGB stars. So if we open up Pixel Math, and Pixel Math you can access by process Pixel Math. And we'll just get rid of that there. You're going to leave uh, everything pretty close to default in order to do this. It's very simple to do. We're going to use the expression editor and we're going to pick our narrow band image as we want to apply it to the RGB image. We're going to leave everything at default. We want to make sure that replace target image is selected. Don't create a new image because it won't work quite the same. You want to replace the target image. And then what we can do is we can simply take the blue triangle drop it on to the RGB image. Now we're applying the narrow band image to the RGB image, but we're protecting the narrow or we're protecting the RGB stars. And we'll let Pixen site apply it and there you have it. So we've got before without the narrow band applied to the RGB image and after when it is applied to it. So now we've got natural star colors. We can see we've got these natural star colors occurring, which is exactly what we want. But we've also got all of the narrow band data. So we've combined the best of both worlds. I hope this is useful to uh, you folks out there and uh, it, uh, it's not often that you'll use it, but there are times where you take narrowband data and uh, you've taken um, RGB data for the star colors and you want to combine it. This is a very simple and effective way to do it. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you again in the next video. Clear skies, everyone.